Hi, thanks for coming in and checking out Chess Openings Abridged. This is going to be a short video series where we go over the chess openings in a shorter amount of time, taking over Jonathan Schrantz's legacy. Today, we're going to be going over the Sicilian defense, the dragon variation, and the Yugoslav attack. We're going to go over the main line and get some of the main attacking ideas for both sides. So with it being the Sicilian defense, we first start with e4, c5. Following the main lines, we end up playing knight f3, d6, and then d4. And through best practice, white gives up a center pawn in order to get peace activity. We play knight f6 and knight c3 to defend our e-pawn. And then what characterizes it as the dragon is this move g6. Here there are other alternatives black has, such as a6, the Nidorf. There's also e6, the Shivinigan. You have the classical with knight c6, but again, we're just going to be focusing on the dragon. The next move is bishop e3, and this is what helps turn it into the Yugoslav attack. We want to make sure all of our pieces are being developed. And bishop e3 gets our dark square bishop out. We play bishop g7 to fee and keto our kingside bishop. And then we play f3. We play f3 to stop the move knight g4. The reason we don't need to play f3 right away is because if we go back and black plays knight g4 in this position, it's actually a big time blunder. We have bishop b5 check and black ends up losing a piece. If he ends up going bishop to d7, we can end up taking on g4 with the queen because our bishop is pinning black's bishop. If they block with the knight, we take with our knight and black runs into a fork and loses the exchange. So black can't play knight g4 right away. Back to our position after f3, black castles, queen d2, we're looking to castle on the queen side, knight c6, developing our knight, and now here white has two alternatives. Uh, they have bishop c4, or they have castles. Uh, we're going to be focusing on bishop to c4, so we can understand the main ideas for both sides. Bishop d7 continuing to develop. Castle queen side. And here, whenever both sides castle on opposite sides of the board, we have white king on the queen side, we have the black king on the king side, both sides are going to be rushing to push their pawns to attack the enemy's king. We're going to try and break down their fortresses. We're going to play rook c8. And in Sicilian, this is a very common idea, we want to put a rook on c8 to take control of an open c file. Bishop b3 is a little bit of prophylaxis, uh, prophylaxis against uh, knight e5 because we don't want to move this bishop with tempo. We can just move it right away. Knight e5. Now we're going to go ahead with the idea of pushing pawns to break down the fortress. h4. Black is going to play knight c4. He's going to trade his knight for one of white's bishops. So if white allows it, he's going to take on e3. Uh, but white's actually going to take on c4 with the bishop. We're going to take on c4 with the rook. Uh, we don't want to move the queen. We have a nice little battery coming down here with the queen and bishop. Uh, here, white is going to go with a pawn sacrifice. This is actually a big theme in the Yugoslav. We can sacrifice a pawn to open up the h file. The knight's going to take. We don't want to ruin our pawn structure. And then white's going to play g4 and attack the knight. So we have to move it back to f6. Uh, and here, now we see white has an open h file. He's trying to attack. Now black has a very common sacrifice that we're about to see in a couple moves. Um, white could play h6 and try and trade off this dragon bishop. They say this bishop and the dragon is very, very important for black and sometimes can be considered worth the value of a rook, which is five points. Black is going to go and take on e4 with the knight. And this might seem strange at first, because it looks like we're just taking a pawn. And if they take our knight, uh, then it looks like we just gave up a knight. But we actually have this move, rook takes d4, attacking the queen. And after the queen moves, we can actually recover pretty nicely after rook takes check. Um, and here, both sides are doing fine. Now let's say they move the queen, 
or a common move you might see is queen to h2, but this lets black kind of win after bishop e5, our queen is being attacked. Um, so the best move is queen to e3. Uh, just so that way there's no tempos um, off the queen. And the uh, common sacrifice for black is rook takes on c3. This is a positional sacrifice. After b takes c3, a very common move is queen to a5, trying to come in and break in on a white's queen side. Uh, and if they take with the queen, uh, then, well, the queen hangs, so they can't do that. Um, but b takes c3. Our knight is under attack, so you have to move it back to f6. And now we see white has this attack on the king side coming towards this king. Black is going to try and attack on white's queen side. And this is kind of where the middle game begins uh, and we exit out of the opening. So uh, this is the Yugoslav attack. Uh, some, again, the key features is going to be black sacrificing on c3 for position. And uh, it's going to be a hyper aggressive game with both sides trying to checkmate each other. So that is the Sicilian defense. Uh, dragon variation in the Yugoslav attack.